How's it going everybody? It's Charlie and welcome back to another video on the Chatting Lead YouTube channel. Hope everyone has had a great day so far as always. Um, just before we get into tonight's video guys, make sure that you are all smashing that like button. It really does help get the video out there to more people. Please subscribe to the channel if you are brand new as well and help me reach 3,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Hit that notification bell and of course get all of your thoughts and opinions into the comment section down below. It's time for your predicted 11. Obviously, Daniel Farker did his um, pre-game press conference earlier on today. Sorry, just before I go any further, please make sure that you are also checking out the sponsor of the channel, Mr. Josh Firth. The links for his Etsy store and Instagram page are in the description down below for all your football graphic design needs. So, yeah, as I was saying, Daniel Farker did his pre-Coventry press conference earlier on this afternoon, where he was obviously sharing team news ahead of this Saturday's fixture in Coventry. And um, there were some big updates. Um, he was questioned about a lot of things, and it was interesting to see his responses. Um, so, obviously, team news-wise, um, Jamie Shackleton looks set to be out for two weeks with an abductor, or a abductor, however you say it, injury, um, which, you know... No disrespect to Jamie Shackleton, but he's not a key player, is he? So I wasn't too bothered to see that. I can't lie to you. Um, the main one that I was waiting to hear about was, of course, Elia Gruev. Um, and Daniel Farker did share an update on him. He said that he's not yet trained with the team this week, um, but he is a little bit likely to feature. So there is a, a slim chance that he will be available for Saturday's game and he will be assessed over the next 48 hours. Really, really hope that the Bulgarian beauty um, can feature on Saturday because I feel like we saw against Hull on Monday night. I know we won the game, but we just lost the midfield battle, in my opinion. We completely lost it in the midfield. Now, Archie Gray and Glenn Kamara are both very good midfielders, but both are not very good at playing in the sixth role. I thought Archie Gray especially looked like a lost puppy in that midfield. Um, I feel like Gray's better when he's moving box to box, not as a deep line midfielder. Same goes with Glenn Kamara as well. Um, so it will be good if we can get Gruev back into the team. But if not, I expect Farka to go with pretty much a similar, well, ex the exact same team really, um, as what we saw on Monday night. Um, so yeah, let's get into, in fact, actually, he was questioned about Matteo Joseph as well. I forgot about that. Obviously, people are saying that Joseph should start. Um, I'm I'm advocating it. I'm, well, I say advocating it. I, I wouldn't mind it if it happened. But I just feel like at, at this stage of the season, and Farker pretty much alluded to it, that you would prefer to have the experience of Patrick Bamford up top over Matteo Joseph, at least starting games anyway. But like Farker said, and it's right, you know, Joseph has had great impacts off the bench in recent weeks. Obviously, the equaliser against Watford. I thought it was good on Monday night against Hull as well. I think the Stoke City appearance a few weeks back is kind of going a bit under the radar. I thought him and Perot on that evening changed the game completely in our favour. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can understand why people are, are, are wanting Joseph to start. But I think, you know, six games left in a in an automatic promotion race, title race, you know, it's... It, it, I think it would be a little bit silly to throw Matteo Joseph in at this point and put so much pressure on a young man's shoulders. Um, so I, I feel like he will stick with Patrick Bamford for the foreseeable. So let's get into the predicted 11 then, who I think Daniel Farker will pick. Um, in goal will, of course, be Ilan Melier, who I thought had a slightly better game against Hull City than what he did um, against Watford. Um, at the back, I think if Gruev is fit and does start. I think Archie Gray will move back out to right back with Rodon and Ampadu in the middle and Junior Firpo at left back. Um, and then I think it'll be Gruev and Kamara in the double pivot. However, if Gruev isn't fit or is or is at least on the bench and doesn't make the start in 11, I feel like the back four will be as it was on Monday evening with Sam Byram at right back, Rodon, Ampadu and Firpo with Archie Gray and Glenn Kamara in the double pivot. Hopefully, Farker can figure out a way, if it is those two, to get the best out of them both in that role. In front of the double pivot, I think it will obviously be the same with Dan James on the right, Jorginho Rutter in the 10, um, and Crescencio Somerville out on the left. 
with Patrick Bamford up top. Um, you know, I, I think Cree Somerville's come under a little bit of criticism over the last few days just for how he handled the whole penalty scenario on Monday night. Look, I was under the impression, as I'm sure a lot of you lot were, that that Joel Perot, when he's on the pitch, is our number one penalty taker, which is why I think Perot grabbed the ball or at least wanted to take it because he's thinking, you know, I'm on the pitch, it's mine. But apparently it's come out that obviously Farker instructed Somerville to take it because Perot hadn't been on the pitch long, which I kind of get, but then it kind of disregards the whole thing that he said earlier on in the season about, you know, that it's Perot that takes the penalties when he's on the pitch. I think Bamford is an absolute no. Um, he could be in the form of his life and he'd still miss a penalty. Um, so, yeah, I get if Perot's not on the pitch, then it's Somerville. Um, although Somerville has missed one, hasn't he? He missed that penalty against Cardiff that afternoon, which didn't end up affecting the game, but he has missed one. Um, so, yeah, I, I can understand why there was a bit of confusion from Perot's part. Um, but at the end of the day, Somerville did step up and he scored the penalty. You know, if he'd have missed it, then it'd have been a totally different story. Um, but I don't think there's any real need to deep it more than that. It is what it is. He took it, he scored it. Let's move on. Um, so, yeah, you know, hopefully Cree can have a better game because I did feel like, other than the last sort of 10, 15 minutes the other night, I thought he was quiet in the game. Um, you know, he's arguably our best player, arguably the best player in the league. You know, so if we can get him into better form over the next six games, you know, this game on Saturday, obviously, I will be doing my match preview for it tomorrow night, um, where I'll be going in more detail about how I think the game will go. But just briefly, you know, I do think this game on Saturday is the toughest out of the remaining games we've got left. Yeah, you can argue Southampton on the final day, um, but I feel like Coventry and Southampton are the hardest. You know, we don't have to worry about Southampton until the final day. And hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all wrapped up by then and it doesn't matter. But in terms of the games that do matter at the minute, Coventry is the toughest by a mile. Um, and it will be a tough game. So we need all our best players to be 100% on it. And I'm sure that there will be. I'm sure Daniel Farker will have a master plan um, to get the better of Coventry on Saturday. But as I said, guys, I will be giving all my thoughts on Saturday's game on my match preview tomorrow night. So make sure that you tune into that. And that's the end of this Predicted 11 video for this evening. I really hope that you've all enjoyed it. If you have, please make sure that you smash a like on the way out. It really does help get the video out there to more people. Let's get more eyes onto the channel and grow the community bigger. And please subscribe if you are brand new and help me reach 3K as soon as possible. Hit the notification bell and, of course, get all your thoughts and opinions into the comment section down below. And like I said, guys, I will see you on the match preview tomorrow night. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening and I will see you in a bit. Cheers.